let's let's take a look. I mean, even though I was hoping that we'll be able to diversify. By the way, we're going to forward the bill for advertising to your office after this program. No, you too soon. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, talking about the de decentralization of uh, m millers, you know, rolling mills. How you, how do you uh, how exactly do you intend to do? Is is that going to be government run or you say you're bringing this special facilities? Is that for individuals to buy or how exactly is it supposed to work? Yeah, good point. This government, we are working very hard to diversify the economy, and to do that, we must actually enable the private sector. So everything we do is really for the private sector. But we don't believe that a laser fair system in which government just simply sits back and assumes that market forces by itself is going to solve a problem, is going to do it. I don't buy that argument at all. And so that's why government has to enable it. So government enables it and the private sector leads. So How we, does the government well, enable we, it? In well, this? we went to China. The, the coordinating minister of the economy under Mr. President's directive mm -hmm. sent us to China to negotiate for um, a facility, that low interest rate concessionary facility. That allows us to acquire two major things. Four high quality cassava flour, 18 large scale industrial mills. And then 100, an issue we'll get to later on rice, 100 integrated rice mills. Total financing for that, $1.2 billion. That is not in the budget, that is private money. That we are going to warehouse it, we're working with Bank of Industry, that is going to be advertised for private sector to buy them. So government is catalyzing access to cheaper financing. Because if we left it just to the private sector, it will never happen. So government's role is to enable. The role of the private sector is to take it. And so that's what we are really doing. And we're very excited uh, about that. And I think this is one of the things where you know, Mr. President uses his political weight to drive change that is structural. Okay, let's go back to the issue of security because, I mean, we've, we've talked about how, you know, displacement is beginning to affect uh, farmers up north and up, uh, supply down south as well. Uh, how exactly do you intend to tackle it? We've read issues, uh, articles where they say that the Ministry of Agriculture cannot, is not, cannot help in security matters or it's not the the purview of security it doesn't cover the purview of security how exactly do you intend to be able to battle this challenge considering how it affects uh, the grand plan that you have for agriculture well you know with the the it's a, it's a good point you raised but it's a challenge we face as a country that cuts across our lives um, it's not just an agricultural issue uh, the president you know it's on top of it every single day. It's on the mind of the president. He's working hard on that issue. The government's working on hard, hard on that issue. Um, obviously, these are sensitive national security issues, and I cannot tell you uh, the measures that are being taken. But government, I can assure you, is working hard on this issue to solve it. And the reason is because you know Nigeria is doing well in terms of foreign direct investment. Today, our foreign direct investment grew from about 1.5 billion dollars in the mid 90s to today to well over seven billion dollars a year even in the cassava sector that we were talking about we had mr president sent us to us to hold an investment forum on agriculture it was hugely successful as a result of that we were able to attract a u.s investor who has committed six billion dollars to establish ethanol plants in nigeria that will be two plants in the north that will use roughly 100,000 hectares each of sugarcane. And in the south, two ethanol plants that will use 75,000 hectares each. That tells you that the level of confidence in Nigeria externally is very high. For somebody to put in $6 billion of his own money on the line for a country, it's a mark of confidence. So what I'm trying to say is that, I mean, take even the case of agricultural sector. Bill Gates, for example. Mr. President, as you know, set up an Agricultural Transformation Implementation Council. As part of that, it's a group called Eminent Persons Group to advise Nigeria about how we diversify the economy and create agribusinesses that can take us to become perhaps like Brazil. 
Mm. I'm glad to say that Bill Gates, the richest man on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. was called by His Excellency the President, and Bill Gates agreed to be an eminent, a, per, a member of the eminent persons group to advise Mr. President on agriculture in Nigeria. That tells you that there is huge confidence in this economy. This, mm. So I think that's why you see that we are working day and night on the security issue. But the thing is also, I mean, presently, what, what compensation do we have for the farmers who have been displaced or those who have lost produce as a result of the conflict or the security situation that we currently encounter? Yeah, you know, the, you know agriculture is uh, not on the exclusive list. It's on the concurrent list. And so the state governments are working, they're doing their best. Each of the governors are doing their best, especially in the north where we have challenges. The northern governors are working hard. They're working with the excellence of the president, looking for ways in which to solve that particular issue. Unfortunately, you cannot compensate a lot of this, which is uh, quite unfortunate. However, here are some of the measures that we within the ministry are making. We will reflect uh, in the current budget increased um, allocation for price insurance. Uh, in the sense that if you are producing something and your price were to almost collapse, you will have a price insurance mechanism that come, at least insures you a little bit for some of the loss that you are getting. Uh, we are also going to uh, be investing quite a lot on the issue of farm level storage, which again will allow you to store your products for quite some time. But all of that does not remove the need to address that security issue, which, as I tell you, is on the front burner always of this government. And by the grace of God, we will succeed with it. Mm. Well, a whole lot to talk about. And, uh, but again, you, you know, you talked about rice. When we talk about rice, perhaps we should also be looking at uh, some other products uh, here in the country that we can easily export along with the uh, cassava we talked about. Uh, have we started thinking towards taking our rice out or making people consume more rice? Because the other time, you told the nation of how much we consume by exporting, importing rice to the country. Yeah. In fact, this is another very exciting movement that we're doing on the rice side. You know, Nigeria spends, you know, 356 billion naira every year importing rice. You buy is, from is, China. is that figure real? Yes. As in real for real? I think it's even more because we have things that get across the border, like for the porous border. You know, just look at the market. You will see it there. You know. So the issue is we had become a dumping ground for rice. You know. I mean, look at India today. Okay. India is having excess of about 58 million metric tons of rice. The market, Nigeria. Nigeria is the largest importer of rice in the world right now. Okay. But what we are doing is that our own local rice is better. The rice we are bringing into this country is 10 to 15 year old rice that are coming out of strategic grain reserves, excess supply of years of those country. But we have Ofada rice here. We have Adani rice here, right? We have Abakaliki rice here. It's better rice. And here are some of the things that have happened in the last one year. When Mr. President announced the policy for us to be self-sufficient in rice, we had to do a number of things. The first thing is to close the loophole where people bring in brown rice and disguise it as finished rice.